Just recently, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet came out, and it was launched with a whole slew of bugs. Now, they did patch them out later on, but this issue highlights a much bigger problem with the Pokemon franchise, which could lead to more debacles like this moving forward. And what exactly is it? Well, that's going to be explained in this video, so stay tuned. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet was released for the Switch in November of 2022. Developed by Game Freak, the game was the first in the series to implement a lot of open world elements into the core game series, so think Breath of the Wild mixed in with Pokemon. The game has you exploring the Paldea region, and unlike previous entries, there's no actual order as to which gyms you battle, it really depends on which area in the Paldea region you explore. And, well, I do like this idea, and is one that I think serves a bit of potential for the franchise. However, when you have a franchise as big as Pokemon, and how soon of a development window the series has, it is very likely going to introduce a lot of problems moving forward. And in the case of Scarlet and Violet, this game launched with bugs. A whole lot of bugs, some of which were game-breaking. Others caused a whole bunch of insanity for the game models and game graphics and textures that it was very clear it wasn't ready for prime time. The good news is much of the bugs has been patched out, and the game now plays more competently. Still, with how much bugs the game had, a lot of people have called for the game to be delayed until all those bugs are ironed out. But unfortunately for the Pokemon franchise, is really not that simple, as this issue goes beyond just what's at face value. That problem, ladies and gentlemen, is the three-year development cycle. So what is the three-year development cycle? Well, that is the number of years between each new main entry Pokemon title. After the release of Gold and Silver in Japan, the game came out three years after Red and Green came out in Japan. Granted, the game did have a lot of development that went on, but by having a set date for a whole new generation of Pokemon, this also gave other diversions within Pokemon media time to prepare, particularly the trading card game and the anime. And, well, after that, they realized that when it comes to Pokemon's development cycle, it was decided that three was the magic number. By having a new generation of Pokemon introduced every three years, this gave the Pokemon anime some time to plan Ash's journey into each region as to where the endpoint would be. And same with the trading card game, where they'd plan out the releases of their cards within each year leading up to the next generation. It's a formula that has worked and has kept the games and the franchise afloat all throughout the years. New generations of Pokemon would come and there would be an even new set of ideas that would come from it. But here's the thing about it that worked. Pokemon, during that time, was made primarily through 2D sprites. This was true as we went to the, into the Game Boy Advance era, where we went from 8-bit sprites to 16-bit graphics that looks more on the level of the Super Nintendo. And as the DS era went along, the games would continue to graphically improve as 3D environments would be introduced in some of the games, such as Pokemon Black and White, for instance. But it was still primarily 2D sprites, as they were still able to bring about a completed product. But once the game started to transition into full 3D, like with Pokemon X and Y, well then that's kind of where things started to get a bit complicated for the Pokemon franchise. With 3D environments now being introduced, that meant more work being put into each of the 3D characters and game maps. I mean, really, if you think about it, part of working in 2D means not having to spend so much time working on all the ground textures, 
working on the planes and everything, and all of the buildings that you have to build just really adds up. And as the franchise gets bigger and bigger, then the more it really stretches that three-year development cycle even more thin. And now, over the years, we've been seeing debacles like in Pokemon Sword and Shield, where a lot of the game's graphical visuals, including the trees, looks very underwhelming and not very good. And it was really telling when the new Pokemon Snap game looks a lot more visually appealing than anything in Sword and Shield. And now with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, they're basically trying to make a Breath of the Wild caliber open world Pokemon game combined with the main series. Now, stop and think about how insane this is for Pokemon's three-year development cycle. Breath of the Wild was a game that was in development for seven years. It started development right after the previous game, Skyward Sword, had finished up development. And over the years the game was in development, it went through a lot of delays. In fact, it's because of this long development time that the Wii U got HD remasters of other Zelda games like Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. As this is to hold people over with other home console Zelda games before Breath of the Wild is fully finished. And there's a good reason why Breath of the Wild's development time took as long as it did, because it is a big open world game which required a lot of time building the engines, building all the individual environments, building the character models, building the weapons, the buildings, and everything. It's a huge process for any game development. Same also goes for Tears of the Kingdom, which is the next Zelda game coming out in May, and is a sequel to Breath of the Wild. Now, granted, that game took six years, and that's likely because it uses much of Breath of the Wild's engine, so that doesn't require as much time, but still, that was in development for a good number of years after Breath of the Wild came out, as there's a ton to build off of. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, was in development for about half of the time as Tears of the Kingdom, and while that game's open environment is much smaller than Breath of the Wild's, the fact that it's using that type of open world environment shows that the bar for the Pokemon franchise has been set higher and higher. There's more of a higher standard to be set with each game, and because of that, that makes the three-year development cycle much more unrealistic to achieve a fully functional game. And that I do think is part of why I think Scarlet and Violet was released as the broken mess as it is. Also, it doesn't help that Game Freak also worked on another Pokemon game released that same year, which is Legends Arceus, which also had that Breath of the Wild-esque Pokemon environment. Even though the mechanics to the overall game is far different than in the base series, it's still another open-world-style Pokemon game that Game Freak was developing before Scarlet and Violet had come out. Still, a lot of the buggy mess of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet has led to people calling on Game Freak to delay the game by a good number of months. But unfortunately for the Pokemon franchise, it's not that simple. Pokemon is more than just a video game franchise at this point. It's also a very highly commercial franchise with lots of merchandising. I'm talking the likes of the trading card game, the anime, mobile apps such as Pokemon Go, and toys and plushies. And all of that would be in preparation months before the next Pokemon game would come out. I mean, if you think about it, as a lot of the team is hard at work, crafting the environments and working on the gameplay, we have factories putting together a whole supply line of trading card games and toys and all of that, and the anime crew is likely hard at work at making the next Pokemon anime season based around that new game. So delaying the game, unfortunately, isn't really an option to them, as doing so would throw the entire merchandising side of Pokemon way out of balance, especially if everything released based off the previous generation is already done and over with, and they're given a whole five months or six months lull 
of not manufacturing anything, all because the games have gone through a delay just so they could go through the whole debugging process and refine things graphically. It would be a whole mess all around. In fact, this is something that has actually happened once before, way back to the release of Pokemon Gold and Silver. Even though that game was released three years after Red and Blue came out in Japan, it actually was originally scheduled to come out a year earlier, but after much silence, the Japanese Pokemon website announced that game's release date to be June 1999 and later November 1999, as there was a lot of the Japanese team that needed to perfect the game. But the delay did set things back in other forms of Pokemon merchandising, such as, for instance, the anime, as the Pokemon Indigo League saga ended under Pokemon Gold and Silver's original Japanese release window. This led to the Pokemon anime having to create an entire filler season, which would be Orange Archipelago, or the Orange Islands as it would be called in the States. And this was created entirely with the intention of bridging the gap in between the Indigo League and Johto, as the Johto region was originally going to begin right after the Indigo League ended due to Gold and Silver's original release date. So what would be the best solution to this? If delaying the games are not an option, and they want to keep the three-year development cycle going on for each new entry to keep up with the merchandising side of things, well then, what would be the best solution? Well, probably the best thing to do would be to take the Call of Duty approach. No, I don't mean releasing a new main entry Pokemon game every year, although I'm sure the Pokemon company wouldn't be opposed to that, but I'm talking the method of how Call of Duty was able to make a new entry every year, and that's by having a different development company make a new game while another development team takes on another. So in the case of Call of Duty, their main developer, which is Infinity Ward, has developed games in the series since the very first game in 2003. And as Call of Duty became a series with yearly installments being released, well then, that left more developers being enlisted, as well, you can't really have one developer development team make a new game every year. So Infinity Ward would work on the Modern Warfare games, as well as Advanced Warfare and Infinite Warfare, and also enlisted are two other major developers working on other games, such as Treyarch and Sledgehammer. Each one of these three developers spends three years working on a Call of Duty game, and this allowed for each entry to be released yearly. With Pokémon, they could take a similar approach by having other developers outside of Game Freak work on other entries. Like, say for instance, in the entry after Scarlet and Violet, Game Freak works on their own Breath of the Wild-style Pokémon game that takes about six years or so to complete. And, well, one development studio they could maybe enlist for the next entry could be ILCA, who worked on Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, the remakes of Pokémon Diamond and Pearl, that is the first main series Pokémon game, to not be developed by Game Freak, even though they were credited as working on the original Diamond and Pearl. Now, I can see ILCA working on a main entry Pokémon game with how much they did with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Sure, it wasn't perfect, but I think that game showed that Game Freak doesn't have to be the only developer to work on the main entry Pokemon games. They could bring in other development teams and train them to work on some of the other Pokemon generations, as Game Freak works on their own Pokemon titles. That way, they could still keep up with that three-year development cycle, the games would be released in a more proper state, and we'd see less debacles like what we saw with the glitches in Scarlet and Violet. Now, do I think they'd actually do that? Probably not. After all, Scarlet and Violet is up there as one of the top-selling Pokémon games, and, well, as long as the games end up doing well, then, well, why would they want to improve on the games themselves? 
until something happens that leads to the games taking a huge hit in sales, I don't know if I see much changing. Then again, the fact that ICLA developed the Diamond and Pearl remakes, well, who knows? Maybe they may have ICLA develop a whole new generation of Pokémon. That we shall see. But what do you guys think? Do you think having multiple developers would be beneficial to the Pokémon franchise? Or do you think they don't need to do anything and the three-year development cycle is fine the way it is? Let me know what you think in the comments below, and be sure to, to subscribe to DSL Media for more content. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.